Today's episode is brought to you by ETB Games. ETB Games is, of course, our locals in Alexandria, Louisiana. They are our one-stop shop for all of our card game needs. They have singles and sealed product for the games that you love, like Yu-Gi-Oh!, Magic the Gathering, and Pokemon. Of course, you can also find the accessories that you need, such as sleeves, binders, playmats, and more. And if you're into D&D, well, they have all of your D&D figurines, the paint for the figurines, dice, books, and anything that you would need to play. So be sure to check out ETB Games. There is a link in the description down below. And now back to today's episode. Hello, everybody, and welcome into today's episode of the Top Cut Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast. My name is Sonny. I am here with my co-host, Caleb. Hello. And of course, before we get too far in, we want to thank all of our wonderful sponsors. So a huge thank you to, of course, ETB Games for their sponsorship at the beginning of this video. And of course, thank you to Gem Accessories, Steel Fox Games, and Millennium Threads. You can find links to all of those down below. And there's discount codes for Gem Accessories and Millennium Threads. And there's a TCG player link for Steel Fox Games. Now, of course, we want to also encourage you to check out our wonderful affiliate links down below for TCG player and, of course, Dragon Shield accessories. So if you just click those before you shop and you can go ahead and support the podcast, cost you nothing extra at all. Now, mm -hmm. if you do want to go that extra mile to support the podcast, you can join our Patreon, which there's a link to down below. You get an extra episode every week, and that episode is, as of right now, they're not really Yu-Gi-Oh! centric. Kind of whatever we feel like talking about. Right. So we've talked about Pokemon, we've talked about anime, different kinds of things like that. But there is an extra episode every week. So... Be sure to check that out. And of course, the other thing is that if you join our patron, we read out and thank all of our patrons every week. So a huge thank you to Cam Yang, Dragon Maid Stunzeed, Kane Martin. Please make new Luna Light support Konami. Zyphorus, Yeet Defeat, Blackwing, Silverwing, The Ascendant is the best floodgate. Earth Machine, best deck. Epi, has anyone actually read Toy Vendor? HGH Cyber. I'm not a man. I am not a god. I am Lita Lita Lee. I am McLincoln, Mountain Man, Oatmeal Spaghetti, Owen Alvarado. Pingu is the best deck. Newt Newt. <laughs> Quitting the game is a floodgate, Sprite Farter, Unbanned number 95, Konami. Understanding and reading are two different things. Virtually Savior's World, Rogue, and Tier 2 are the polite terms for bad deck. AD, Aaron Gardner, Asami, Ashless Champs, Bistio Pizza Hut, Duty Booty, Dragon Maidenless Behavior, Eldritch, The Lord of Floodgates, and Monkey Brains, Fur Hire, Dog Turd, Heroes, Pebble Cereal, Jerry Beans, Man, Cam, The Disciple of Caleb's Waifu Philosophy, Old Man Red, Pin Code 143, Ray Powell, Santa Claus, and Why Are Sword Soul Players Inhaling So Much Copium? You know, I couldn't tell you. I, I've thought about it and thought about it, and I, I couldn't tell you. I, th I guess there are cool innovations to be excited about, but for the most part, I mean, we just, we, we, we ball, you know? We, we play. So, let's go ahead and get into today's episode. Before we do, actually, uh, if you haven't already, please be sure to go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube. There is, of course right down below the video if you're on youtube already check to see if the button is gray or red if it's red just go ahead and click it it's really easy real simple it takes two seconds and supports the podcast and of course if you're on patreon or or so well itunes or spotify go ahead and check that out now the last thing i'm going to mention before we get into the episode really good so if you're on itunes or spotify you may have recently noticed that we now have pre-roll, mid-roll, and end-roll ads on this show. And that is besides our normal, like, sponsored stuff. And I understand that it is quite a significant change. But this is something that was offered to us through our... Uh, company that we go through to post the episodes they've said that we are getting enough views and enough listens and enough plays to where we can justify having actual advertisements on the show that we don't actually go out and procure ourselves the advertisements are curated to our demographics and automatically inserted into the episodes with that said uh, I do want feedback on that 
I would like people to tell us what they think about it because it's pretty jarring and it's, it is different and it does help us because we do make money off of it. But if it is completely ruining the listener experience, let, let us know when we'll, we'll adjust. Yeah. We'll try to figure something out. Cause we can, we, there's, there's, there's adjustments that we can make, not big ones. Yeah. But it's something right. Yeah. Yeah. So I would obviously like to keep it kind of the way it is because I think in an hour long program, a pre-roll, a mid-roll and an end roll is not too significantly terrible and they're all skippable. Mm -hmm. So you can just hit the fast forward button and just blow right through it and not have to listen to it. So it's up to you. I I kind of want to get listener input on this. It's hard for me to turn down money but at the same time it's also important that we make the show as good as possible for the listeners so let us know what you think about that and give us some feedback the best way to do that is by joining our discord server Mm -hmm. and going to maybe podcast discussion or something like that one of the appropriate channels and talking about it and we're always there and you know we hear these things and we talk about things so but with all that said, let's go ahead and talk about what are we doing? New cards? Yeah, we got some new cards to talk about real quick. Not a, not as many, obviously. Uh, we only got like eight. Yeah. So right now is that time where we're getting a ton of cards. But the feeling that I get from these particular cards is that it's like you know how you get to the end of the set and it's like oh yeah, and we're also putting all this pack filler in. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it feels. Yeah, and then Pack Filler has a weird range of being really good to just unplayable. Unplayable back when the game first came out. Okay, well, really good for Pack Filler. Not all... There's very little Pack Filler that is actually genuinely playable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, when, and, if, and if there's Pack Filler, quote-unquote, that is actually good, Konami let you know by making it a secret. Wink. Right, 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 right. So... Let's start off with uh, this card, which has very cool artwork. It's just called Full Active Duprex. So this is kind of like Two-Headed King Rex returning, I guess. Not really. It's just a two-headed dinosaur. Yeah. This is a level nine wind cybers effect monster with 2,800 attack and 1,000 defense. You can only use the first and third effect of this card's name each once per turn. One, you can banish two link monsters from your graveyard. Special summon this card from your hand. Two, if your linked monsters can make up, or your linked monsters can make up to two attacks on monsters during each battle phase. Three, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one cyber monster you control. It gains a thousand attack. This feels like a really cool extender, but the issue is I don't know that these decks really needed additional extenders. Yeah, particularly in uh, this one, this one specifically, because I think this would primarily be used in something like Code Talkers or. Uh, some other math mech maybe even. yeah maybe even math mech you, you can just banish two of your link monsters to drop it even then you got even then you have to like hard draw it right unless you got like a generic level eight searcher because cyanic mining only searches level four and lower right so it, it puts you on basically you have to have a deck that is cybers or at least cybers adjacent Oh, no, 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 it'd have to be cyber centric because all the cybers adjacent decks um, are very xenophobic in that they search for themselves. Well, I mean, like you mean their own archetypal cards? Yes. Okay, because I was like, because he is cybers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I mean. They're, they're very xenophobic in that they they try to stick within their own arc uh ar- ar- ty- archetypes. Ugh. Like uh. Like the most cybers adjacent deck I can think of is Marincess, and they only search for other Marincesses. Right, yeah. I don't know. It's. See, this is what I'm talking about with this pack filler. It's like borderline almost playable. Yeah, it, yeah. Like, 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 again, I think the only decks I could use this is maybe Math Mech and, and uh, Code Talkers. Yeah. But Code Talkers. Salad? Just... No, because they, they, they need fire. They, they do fire and cybers. Yeah, but they don't need fire to climb into access code talker. That's true. That I mean, true. just for link climbing purposes, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is true. And they can banish a Bay Lynx and one of their 
Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, re uh, reincarnation linked monsters. Yeah. Okay, next one. Next up, we have the Harvest Angel of Doom, level four dark fairy pendulum effect monster. Dark fairy is cool. Uh, 1800 attack, 1000 defense, uh, pendulum scale of eight. Pendulum effect. You can only use the pendulum effect if this card's name once per turn. One, during your main phase, you can destroy this card. And if I do, if you do, add Blackhorn of Heaven from your deck to your wait, hand. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> so wait, put this in the pendulum zone. Effect, grab Blackhorn of Heaven. That's funny. That's really funny. While I read the second effect, you mind pulling uh, Blackhorn of Heaven for a quick little reminder on what Blackhorn of Heaven does? Sure. <clears throat> monster effect. You can only use the first and second effect, second monster effect, this card's name each once per turn. One. If this card is normal or pendulum summoned, add Horn of Heaven from deck to hand. And if this card Wait, is tributed... Horn of Heaven or like a Horn of Heaven card? You can add Horn of Heaven. Okay, that's funny. And uh, if this card is tributed, you place it in your pendulum zone, then effect grab Black Horn. So Horn wow. of Heaven is pay, if I recall, it's like pay 2,000 life points. No, it's pay 1,000 life points to negate a special summon, isn't it? No life point. Just negate the special summon of one of your opponent's monsters and destroy it. No, that's Black Horn. I'm talking about regular Horn of Heaven. Oh, just Horn of Heaven? Yeah. So Pendulum Effect is to grab Black Horn, which isn't, which is actually pretty good. So Horn of Heaven is offer one of your own monsters on the field as a tribute to negate the summon, including special summon of a monster and destroy it. Normal summon. That's the Metal Raiders text. Would you like the, the more, more recent text? Yeah. Okay, let's go Legendary Collection 3. But based off that, Normal Summon, grab the horn set, activate horn, tribute, and then goes into the pendulum zone. Your next turn, grab black horn. Okay. When a, wa when a monster would be summoned, colon. Okay, so activation condition. Yeah. Tribute one monster cost, negate the summon, and if you do, destroy that monster. You, then you tribute the actual Harvest Angel of Doom. It goes in your pendulum zone. The ne uh, you start your next turn. Effect, pop it, grab black horn. <laughs> oh, okay. That's, I see. That's okay, very that's, funny. That's that's actually solid uh, in a deck that can like re readily more more readily abuse it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next we have Sakitama, level four light fairy spirit effect monster. Four hundred attack, nine hundred defense. Cannot be special summoned. That makes sense. It's a spirit. Yeah. You can only use the first and third effect of this card's name each once per turn. One, you can reveal this card in your hand immediately after this effect resolves. Normal summon one spirit monster from your hand. Okay. It's really good, actually. Yeah. Two, once per turn during the end phase, if this card was normal summon or flipped face up this turn, return it to the hand. Typical. If this card is tributed, you can target one spirit monster in your graveyard add it to your hand. This seems like it would be an amazing card in any spirit-based deck. The issue is there are no spirit-based decks. Yeah, actually, so one cool thing you could do with this is reveal normal summon itself, uh huh, and then tribute summon, and then add it back to hand. Well, specifically, you can tribute summon Dark Dust Spirit and blow up your opponent's entire field. While also adding this back to your hand. No, wait. If this card, yeah, is you can add it. You can it can add itself. Wow, yeah. Yeah, reveal. Normal summon it, tribute it off for Dark Dust Spear, blow up your opponent's board while also adding it back to hand. And then Dark Dust Spear comes back to your hand in the end phase and you do it again next turn. Yeah. It's a, it's just a, an infinite resource loop of blowing your opponent's board up every turn. That's so funny. Yeah, now if only both of those cards were easily be easily searchable. I think there are cards that search spirit monsters. Yeah, but, but like... Could you imagine if there was just like a spirit Rota? Uh, rots reinforcement of the spirit yeah something like that <laughs> all right you got the next one all right next up we have uh yukai no ren no kenatsubi yurara na ren no right yeah na ren no oh <clears throat> so me just looking at this but the name uh kitsunebi or uh, kitsunebi is like foxfire it's uh -huh. the japanese version of a will o the wisp if you know what that is okay oh uh, it's like basically be in the forest at night and then you see like this little flame appear out of nowhere and then you follow it and in, in a european folklore that's a will-o'-the-wisp which will lure you into a bog and you'll sink okay in japanese folklore they just lure you deeper into the forest and you get lost forever okay all right so i know what a wisp is i guess the will-o'-the-wisp is like a that's where wisp comes from okay as we know wisp the creature comes from a 
Willow the Wisp. Or Wisp the uh, thing floating in the air on Pokemon Legends Arceus. Yes, that's that's it's it 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 is a Willow the Wisp. It's just a Wisp. Wisp is for sure. Anyway, <laughs> so the best translation that I've been able to find for this, um, it wasn't even found by me. It was actually found by my significant other. Was I wrote here? Uh, pleasant phosphorus foxfire urara. So neat. So maybe just like um, maybe it'll just be like foxfire urara or like friendly foxfire urara. Maybe something like that. Yeah. Uh, so, its effect. <clears throat> it is a fire warrior effect monster. Level 3, 200 defense, uh, 200 attack, 1900 defense. Um, you can only use the second effect of this card's name once per turn. One, all face-up monsters on the field become fire. Okay. That's kind of fire. Uh... Two, if this card is in your graveyard and your opponent has a fire monster on the field or in the graveyard, you can special summon it. Okay. I could see it getting used one day. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it's definitely one of those cards that get copies of and just kind of keep in the back of your head that it exists. Okay, this next card is cool as hell. Like, uh, honestly, this card is ridiculous. This card will probably see play at some point. All right, so the next card we have is Ring of Worm, the 100 Apple Dragon. Level 2 Light Dragon Tuner Effect Monster. Okay, okay. Okay, so just automatically... Automatically, everything I've said, level two is now significant. Oh, yeah. Dragon is significant. Tuner, significant. Like, light. this is light. Yeah. They, like, everything about this card's. The fact like, that it's a light dragon in and of itself right. is significant. A everything about the way that this card is already constructed <laughs> from a fundamental standpoint is, is insane. I'd almost say dangerous. Y yeah, and it gets worse. 100 attack, 1100 defense. Have you read this card yet? No. Oh, okay. You're in for it. Okay. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name once each once per turn. One, if there is a face-up non-effect monster on the field, you can special summon this card from your hand. Okay, there's a vanilla or a token. Right. Yeah. Two, during the turn, you synchro summoned a synchro monster. You can banish this card from your graveyard. Special summon 100 apple token. Worm, light, level 2, 100, 100. If this token is used as synchro material, it can be treated as a tuner. Okay, so let's think about this, right? You can... Just in a Sword Soul context, you can normal summon... Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, Mo Yi, get a token, special Synchro 6 uh -huh. into something. I don't know what It you gives can... you level 6 lines in Sword Soul. Also, you can go 8 into Chi Shao uh, yeah, on summon 3, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. go Baron on summon 4. Yeah. Because, you, yeah. Then Chi Shao effect, and then summon 4, bam. Baron the Fleur without uh -huh. worm locking you. Yes. Or that's insane. Or you can go special Ashuna. Mm -hmm. You can then take Ashuna. Link one into Monk special. Special Ashuna to summon uh, Vishuda to use Vishuda and it to go into a nine or you can use it to grab like a shitana go six or you and can then go through the that line yeah and you can just like there's there's so many so, ways to manipulate here particularly just in sword soul particularly because whenever it leaves it then leaves behind a level to another level two non-tuner or tuner whatever you want it can utilize as a tuner so the you can go six into like a Stardust Charge Warrior, eight. and then from Stardust Charge Warrior, you banish this, and then you get a Worm Tuner, and then you can use this and the Stardust Charge Warrior because I don't think Charge Warrior is a tuner. I don't think so either. So you can, or you can do even do like Coral Dragon, right? Which yeah. is also level six, right? But the point is, you draw a card, mm -hmm. and then you draw another card when you synchro into. Uh, dude, I don't know. Like the the amount of combos. To be fair, all this requires that you have it in hand because it's a non-searchable in the deck. Yes. Unless. 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 You, you can, can search dragons. Huh? You can search dragons. No, but you can play a small sprite package and search twos. <laughs> sprite sword soul, just so you can get into the right. Just so you can. Well, no, you. Aren't Tell you? me why it wouldn't work. 
doesn't elf lock you into no nope. gigantic does gigantic locks you know gigantic and level. starter locks you into some level. you can only summon level, level rank and, and link, link twos. twos yes okay so what you can do is you can in theory if you can have another way to get a level two on field you can use them to send uh you can use them to make sp you can use the other two to make Ma sprand oh. yeah sprand and sprand grab. send and then use sprand and something else to make elf and then elf grab it back out and then elf bring it out yes yeah and then butter it up yeah but then, then you could yeah but then yeah but then you can't do baron to summon four no you can't but it could potentially allow you it could to still go, come up right or it could allow you to just go deeper in your combo lines or or just hear me out you can just play it naturally in sprite yeah oh yeah no no because it's just, it's just another level two it's two more level twos yeah this this card is legitimately insane. Well, the issue though is that in order to get the in order to get the token, you ha it has to be used to synchro material. If you link it off, you don't get the extra two. That is fair. That is very fair. So, but still. Yeah, no, it it definitely has a lot of potential. Actually, hear this. You just have to synchro summon during the turn, and the sprite deck does have lines to go into Baron already. Oh, during a turn you Synchro Summon and it's engraved, banish it to get the token. Yeah, so you don't have to Synchro Summon with it. Funnily enough, it also it does say that you have to have the non-effect monster, just that one exists on field. Yes, that is also true. So if you Dude, nib this, this card is ridiculous. So if you nib your opponent and they pass special, or, or if your opponent is running a... Um, an adventure package and they leave the adventure token on field yes you can use that as the material to put this thing on board yeah we're gonna have to see whether or not this is an activated effect to summon it i want to say it is but regardless based, this is really good based on this i don't think it is no i think it is I mean, based on this, but this is tra a translation. In no, but the, okay, they, so usually though they're pretty good with it. You can use the first and second effect. Oh, that yeah, uh, this card's name was Return. Yeah, I didn't think about that. That's fair. I was looking at the coal and I was like, mm. but is it an activated effect, right? So yeah, if there is a face-up a... non-effect monster on the field, colon yeah, which indicates um, condition. Yeah, you can special summon this card from your hand. So there's no cost, just condition. Yeah. Which makes it seem like it's not an activated effect, but at the same time, at the top it states that. But we also don't do activated effects in the same way the OCG does. So to me, when I look for what we would call mm -hmm. an inherent summon, you know, a, a summon that doesn't start a chain, what I would look for is where it says you can special summon this card from your hand. If it doesn't start a chain from your hand would be in parentheses right there. That's fair. But there just might not be parentheses in the translation. I mean, yeah, but I mean, that's also because we don't word our effects. Quite the with, same. Yeah, we don't word our effects. You can only activate the first and second effect one, effect number one, effect number two. We don't do that. Right. So <clears throat> the, w the way we would probably word this is more like if this... Uh, you know, do the both the effects without numbering them, and then kind of go. You can only use each effect of this card's name once per turn. Right. Which would designate the question it as is, an activated effect. I think the question will be whether or not there's parentheses around from your hand. Because well, like a good see. a good example is like if you look at Pancratops. Pancratops says that you can special summon from your hand in yeah. parentheses. Well, yeah. Well, like so, we'll have to wait and see when we finally get an OCG a TCG translation of this, which will be fascinating how they reword this. Yeah, this card, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, this card will be a meta it's, card. It's got a lot of potential. An enormous amount of potential in, in several different very good decks. Oh, yeah. Oh, and it is searchable in Swords by the way. How? It's a dragon. I thought you searched worms, not dragons. Yeah, but you're ser you're also searching Destrudo, which is a dragon. How are you searching Destrudo? What's searching him? Bestial Magnemot. Oh. It searches any dragon. Oh, I, I keep forgetting that they run Bestials now, too. Yeah. You can... Some... Bestial Magnemite searches any dragon. Oh, and you can also synchro it with one of your Bestials. 
who are all level six, aren't they? Yes. Into Chi Shao. Yes. Token. No. Chi Shao requires a worm non tuner, I believe. I thought he was generic. And people smarter than me will figure it out. I don't. Yeah, it's insane though. So moving right along. Next up, we have Pendula Moon. Here's hoping we'll get Pendula Sun at some point. I don't know, man. I don't know. That's that's a bit too cheesy for me. Level one light spellcaster, uh, Pendulum effect monster, obviously. Uh, 200 attack, seven, 700 defense, Pendulum scale of zero, so really good. Yep. Pendulum effect. You can only use the Pendulum effect of this card's name once per turn. One, during your main phase, colon, you can add a face up Pendulum monster from your ice deck to your hand, then destroy this card. Okay. Monster effect. You can only use the monster effect of this card's name once per turn. Uh, one, if you have two cards in your pendulum zone, one on each side, you can add up to two face up pendulum monsters from your extra deck to your hand with a level between exclusive the pendulum scales of the cards in your pendulum zone. Also, for the rest of this turn, unless you pendulum summon after this effect resolves, you cannot activate monster effects, and the effects of any cards in your pendulum zones are negated. So, with the second effect, you would get two back from your extra deck, and then you can either. So, you're pendulum summoning them to your hand. Basically. That's so stupid. And the way it's worded, they want you to add those two to your hand, and then immediately... Pendulum summon. Pendulum summon. That's so stupid. Which is why they negate your Pendulum Monsters effects, and they also negate any other activated monster, any of your other activated monster effects. They want you to immediately after that it resolves, Pendulum summon. So, this card, the goal of it, if I'm not mistaken would be to avoid the restriction of Pendulum Monsters f coming from the extra deck having to be in Link Zones. Correct, because then you get two that you need back to your hand, and then... That's really stupid. Particularly because... But everything to do with Pendulums is stupid, so... Particularly because in order to activate that effect, you have to have this card on field... And then have to and have both your pendulum zones ready to go and be able to pendulum summon. Yeah. Hmm. That's be, really dumb. To be fair, after you pendulum summon, that's bare minimum a link three. Yeah, but still. If you leave, if you if you're if you if you have if you have more uh if you have more pendulum monster extra monster if you have another pendulum monster extra monster zone that's just an access code right there. Yeah. Normal summon. Boom! I got an access code. Let's go. Yeah, I guess that's true. Not good, but not terrible right next we have a wannabe buzz with an exclamation point yep wannabe level two oh light insect effect monster zero attack zero defense which is even scarier you can only use the the effect of this card's name once per turn one during the end phase you can send this card from your hand or field to the graveyard Excavate cards from the top of your deck equal to the number of your opponent's unoccupied spell and trap zones. And if you do, you can set one excavated trap, but send it to the graveyard during the next end phase. Also, place the rest on the bottom of the deck in any order. Huh. Huh. Interesting. Trap support. So basically, so you, ex you excavate five, you set the trap, pass turn... And then if you don't activate that trap during your opponent's turn, it goes to the graveyard. So what if, hear me out here, <clears throat> mm -hmm. we built wannabe sprite. <laughs> That's just got a bunch of random trap cards. No, it's actually just um, paleo sprite. They're, that's what I was talking about, just random trap cards, but... True. All of the paleos are level two. Exactly. Yeah. So well, it's wannabe sprite. Well, <laughs> well, no, I think that'd still be paleo sprite using wannabe as a way to intertwine bridge. the yeah, as a bridge to pay, to bridge into the paleos into your normal combos, which is fascinating because the paleos are which gives sprites a better grind game. See, this is exactly the thing that we're talking about of with all of these level two cards. Monsters. No, all of these, all of these like free agent cards, yeah. right? So you have all this pack filler that to us, like we're like, okay, let's be, let's be really realistic here. Mm -hmm. Except for that dragon tuner card from a couple yeah. cards ago, except for that. Most of this has been garbage. It's not even that it's garbage. It's that you read it and it reads like the most broken card you've ever read. But then you think about and it. And in like in this one exact circumstance, like you, 
you can point to this one niche scenario where this card might be playable, but you realize it'll never see play because that particular scenario was basically never gonna happen. Oh yeah, well, okay, so like my biggest issue is, let's say you summon this thing off of Elf, Elf Gigantic or Sprint. It then sure. activates its effect, sends itself to the graveyard, so you're losing the body on board mm -hmm. to possibly get out of trap, which doesn't become a body until until your next turn. That's only if you are you are capable of activating. No, 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 no. The point is to run three of this, mm -hmm. and then an extremely small, like you just run like a basic sprite engine, like three blue, three mm -hmm. jet, one red, one carrot, three starter. That's your whole sprite engine. Yeah. And then you run the rest is just trap cards. Oh, just vanilla traps, and then including paleo dynamisk. No, just like all an entire paleo engine, like twenty paleo cards. Uh, I don't even think there's. I don't even think you could run twenty. No, you definitely can. Because I only, I only know. Camber roster, Canadia, Dynamicious. Camber, Ro Camber roster is an extra deck monster. Okay, well there there are definitely. Yeah, I know. All the only ones I know of off the top of my head are Agoides. Agoides is an Xyz. Hold on. The only ones I know off the top of my head are Dynamiscus and Canadia. That's because Dynamiscus is really good, and Canadia is passable. Okay, so. You have Canadia, Dynamicious, Olenoides, Morella, uh, Lancolia, Hallucigenia, and uh, Pikachia, although I've never heard of anybody running that. 21. So you have exactly 21. Yeah. Yeah, so just over 20. But, like, the only ones that... Which you would run less than that. Oh, and yeah. Eldania and Hallucigenia. Okay. Did I already do Hallucigenia? Yeah. Okay, so in theory, there's like... 24. Yeah, you can run a couple dozen, but you probably wouldn't run that many. But it's like it's like the idea of running a control deck. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And honestly, if you only ran like... If you only ran, say, like a dozen Paleo cards... So like three Dynamiscus, three Canadia, three... Um, three of the so like that's four Dynamicious, Canadia, that's four places, Olenoides, and maybe Hallucigenia. Okay, so that's five playsets, 15. Yeah, and then like an 11 card sprite engine, I believe, is what the number is. And that's what uh, 15 and 11 is 26 cards, it still leaves you 14 slots. Three You're them, not running any hand traps, three of them taken up by wannabe is 28. Nine. So you're 12 cards left. Yeah. So you have, yeah. So you have 10. no 29, 11 cards left. You have 11 cards. And then you run uh, two golden Lord two, uh, three Scarlet Sanguine, uh, and then three of each of the other two trap cards. And you have a 40 card deck. So Eldlich. Yes. Eldlich. Paleozoic Eldlich. Sprite. Sprite. Which... Does that not sound like the most based control deck you've ever heard? It sound. Yeah, I guess. Plus, you could theoretically you don't even have to run the old Golden Lord stuff. You could also just run the. Uh, oh, you can cut the Golden Lord package, right? Which was we said eleven cards. Yeah, you could also add in just extra level two shenanigans. Yeah, I was about to say you can literally just take like the, that, like the Nimbles and the like the Nimble Beavers and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even say a Deep Sea Diva or three, and maybe even the. Some frogs, like swap frogs. Yeah. Oh, you know, and just like you could, all, like theoretically, you could, you could just do your normal sprite package that sprite decks are running right now. Yeah. Three wannabe and uh, a small, like an eleven, like eleven to twelve card, fifteen card, uh, paleo package. Yeah, yeah. That sounds um, kind of sick. I, the issue is though, is that is that then the paleozoics become a mist body until you activate a trap card and they become bodies during your opponent's turn. Hmm. To be fair, one great way thing one great thing you could probably do with that though is if you put at is that you could then immediately use them as link material mm -hmm. if you have IP Mascarena. But then you what what would you what link for would you even actively go into outside of Oh, you'd go to Underworld Goddess. I was about to say, because then you can also eat one of your opponent's monsters on right. top of Or you can go into Avermax, which is Quite a card. As, yeah, quite a card, not as good. Um, or even Unchained Abomination. Yeah. Cause then uh cause then from there, if you have the one that pops, mm -hmm. uh, cause I know one of those destroy pops a card, uh 
like let's say that's not the one you set and you activate another trap blah, 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 and you saw that set you can then after making unchained abomination activate that pop and then unchained will pop something else there's definitely something here what it is we're not smart enough to figure out just kind of off the, off the cuff like this it's the most explosive control deck of the format that's what i'm saying yeah saying. definitely so it's it's interesting all right uh, last card this one's a fun one actually i think it's fun okay it is a continue uh, uh quick play spell card called tun tun like t-o-n t-o-n okay um you can only use the second uh second effect of this card's name once per turn one target a face-up monster on the field if its current attack defense and or level are higher than their original values they become their respective original values then pay life points and multiples of 100 maximum of a thousand Two, during your pain phase, if your life points are equal to your opponent's and this card is in your graveyard, set it to your field. That's so funny. It's funny, isn't it? It's like, hey, hey. Stop that. Yeah, stop that. Get back where you were. And now our life points are equal. Set it again. I respect this Want to see me do it again? <laughs> <laughs> Want to see me do it again? I love that. I respect it. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't think it's great, but I no, respect it. It's funny. Definitely. Okay, so now let's get into the other half of the show, which we are actually stealing this suggestion for a topic. We're stealing this directly from our Discord server. Yeah, because we actually have a second section under there called Suggestions. Yeah. My, my brain trying to make me say Suggestions and Section at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Did not work. So, yes, uh, we actually have a suggestion to have, and we're pulling this out of there. Yes. So, we have... Okay, essentially, we, I'm just going to read it straight out of Discord. So, mm -hmm. thank you to our moderator, Mirren, who we are stealing this from. <laughs> With Tactical Masters establishing their places in the meta, you could do a tier list episode ranking all of the deck build archetypes and rank the individual packs themselves. We know Grand Creators is the best deck build pack of all time, but taking a look at the legacy of the other archetypes is worth looking at, and they're correct. So, here is here's the, we're gonna go through all of the deck build packs that we've had. Look at the three archetypes that have come out of it, and kind of give our opinion and maybe a grade on where the archetypes ended up. So, let's see. First deck build pack that came out was Spirit Warriors. Your three archetypes were Weather Painters, Magical Muskets, and it says six samurai. I think it was supposed to be super heavy samurai, huh? Ye no, that no, I don't think so. Let me double check. Because I know Warriors. that Six Samurais did not debut in Spirit yes, Warriors. Yes, they were. They were, they've been here, there for a long time. Maybe it was just like extra Six Samurai support. Um, potentially. That that might have been what it was. So Spirit Warriors, Secret Six Samurai. Oh, the Secret Six Samurai. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yes. Okay. So. Just looking at it, this sucks, right? Yeah, mm. like... Magical Muskets were, like, people said they were going to be the next zoo. They were not. They, they People literally were saying that it was going to be Tier 0. It was going to be far and away the best deck in the game. It, it was it was not. Far from it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, S Secret Six Samurai are not good. And Weather Painters are... Uh, unique with rainbow but still it's, not good yeah well with their new rainbow card that they got recently is actually playable not good but it's right. playable next you have dark saviors you have a sky striker vampires and for hire oh so, uh spirit warriors i'm gonna give it like a d um okay so just off of viability i was gonna uh, i agree with the d but just off of the sheer panache of the, from the um of the like artwork from the set is easily an a i mean because sky strikers looks cool i guess oh i was talking about spirit warriors sky strikers are not in spirit warrior okay. weather painters magical muskets six samurai oh, we, we didn't grade it dark saviors my bad okay spirit warriors yeah d yeah everything about the set i'm giving it a d yeah design uh, i'll give it a c yeah, and then Dark Dark Saviors the next one. My bad, I, I skipped ahead mentally. I will give Dark Saviors. So we have Sky Striker, Vampires, and For Hire. Sky Strikers on their own were one of the best decks in the game. Mm -hmm. it, it's still a good deck and still playable. Yes, For Hire has had its moments, 
And vampires are not good. No, they're cool. Not good. Right. So I will give this set a C. And that's purely off the back of Sky Strikers. I agree with the C, but design wise, I'm going to give it a very solid like B plus A minus just from all the panache of vampires. Yeah, really the vamp like the vampire archetype has some amazing artwork. Yeah, so I'm going to give it like a B plus C uh, A minus for design. Yeah. Next we have the Hidden Summoners. So this is Mayakashi, Nephthys and Prank Kids. Prank Kids are obviously the most competitive of these. Prank Kids has one at uh, two YCSs, I mm -hmm. believe. Mayakashi and Nephthys are really bad. I will also give this one a C mm -hmm. as Again. a set that has like one very playable archetype, but Which, not like two or three. An arc, like actually, the, both Dark Saviors and uh, Hidden Summers both had a, one of their archetypes become the best deck of the format. Yes, for sure. Multiple times. Yes. So yeah, solid C just off the back of that one, I think is fair. Yeah, and, and to be honest, I'm almost tempted to put these up in B, because if you look at other ones, there are other ones where the decks aren't bad, but they haven't won anything. Yeah. And then there are some where the decks are just bad. Yeah, but, but well, I was saying like kind of in the middle. Yeah, so we'll, so we'll leave it at C. Because they've been dragged down by the other two archetypes. Yes. Literally two thirds of the stuff in the in the in these sets. Right. So next we have Infinity Chaser Inch. So your three main archetypes in this set are Infinitrack, Evil Eye, and Witchcrafter. Uh, Infinitrack is playable, right? Not by itself, though. Fair. It, but it, I want to drop Spirit Warriors down to F. Because I want... I think Infinity Chaser is better. That's fair. That's fair. But, but not, not that much better. Right. It's yeah, okay, not that's C fair. better. Spirit Warriors F. Infinity Chaser D. Yes. Because yeah. in, Infinity Track is like playable. Even if it's with other things, it's but, playable. Yeah. But I mean, it's kind of... I mean, Infinity Track is just a major gear in Earth Machine that without it, Earth Machine would not exist. Yeah, exactly. Evil Eye means. and Witchcraft are terrible, though. Yeah. Design-wise, I'll give Infinitrack like a B because because trains are cool. Trains are cool. Um, Evil Eye is also a B because I just really like the designs of the cards. Witchcrafter, I'll give a C, but like a just a C. Yeah, yeah. It's cool, but not like and I like the concept of magicians making stuff. Right. But beyond that, I'm like, yeah, it's whatever. Okay, so the next one's everything from here on out is is significantly better. Mm -hmm. So next we have Mystic Fighters, which are Dragon Maids, Math Mech, and Generator. I will give this a C, C plus, C minus. If you okay, think about it, Sky Striker was also a C. To be fair, Dragon Maids have. Well, that's fair. Sky Striker has been, yeah, that, like that's all, yeah, okay. Like, C minus, I can see. Right. So, so Dragon Maids and Math Mech have all been like on the edge of yeah, playability. But neither of them, not neither one of them, have ever been the best deck of the format, unlike Prank Kids and Sky Striker. Math Mech was the third best deck of the format for a while. Yeah, for like a short stint. Yes, after getting Felt short, after getting the most pushed, you know, piece of su su legacy support well, yeah, ever. Yeah, easily one of the strongest support cards that a archetype has ever been given, probably outside right. of Yami Amu. Yeah. Okay, so uh Math Mech was really good and Dragon Maids are much more playable, so I would also put this in C. Yeah. yeah. Next we have Secret Slayers. Now Secret Slayers is insane. I think this is our I think this is gonna be the first A. Yes. But I'm gonna put it in A minus. Say the archetypes, and I'll explain why an A minus in a second. Okay. Your archetypes are Eldlich. Ad Emancipator and Rika. So the reason why I say A minus is entirely because Rika had no relevance until less than a year ago. Rika got there were other plant cards that brought Rika into playability mm -hmm. recently, and Rika has more premier event wins than Ad Emancipator, which is hilarious. Right. But that's the only reason why A minus is entirely the minus part is entirely due to Rika not really being 
it didn't realize its full potential until two years after it released. Yeah, that's the only reason why an A minus. So, the crazy thing is, Eldritch has gone through multiple stints of playability in different forms. God. You have the initial form of playability, which you might not even realize this because you weren't really in the game yet. Mm-hmm. Eldritch w- did not start off as a control deck. Yeah, it was Synchro Eldritch, wasn't it? Yes, it was a combo heavy Synchro Eldritch yeah. deck. And then and it was it, kind of like a synchro pile deck. Yeah, and then it went to just kind of being splashed as a control engine in case your primary engine failed. Yeah, so it was played a lot in the Dogmatica invoked Eldlich deck. Yep. Which hated that. Hated yeah. That deck so much. The acronym for that deck was appropriate because it made me want to die. Mm-hmm. So. Then you had Ad Emancipator, which, and then Eldritch kind of stayed the course as that control deck yeah. for the longest. It still kind of is. Right. And it is also still splashable. As we were talking about earlier, splashing it into a sprite um, trap thing. thing. Right. Trap, sp- sprite, sprite trap. Yeah. Then you have. Uh, Ad Emancipator, which now, Ad Emancipator was insane. That was one of the best combo decks that we may have ever had rock pile the issue is that it never got any premier event wins or even really tops because it was all during covid yeah so there were no tournaments and the deck got hit before tournaments came back right it never actually had a chance to actually do anything it at emancipator will probably go down as the best deck to never get a YCS top ever. I would say the best deck to never exist. Almost, right. Just because that sounds cooler as a headline, the best deck to never exist. It, yeah, that could honestly be an entire, like like five or six years down the line, people are going to be doing histories of like, like you know, lore and history yeah. of Yu-Gi-Oh! And that's going to be like the name of the video, the best deck that never existed. And it's all talking about Adam Anspader because officially... This deck never went to any tournaments. Never. Right, exactly. And it's full powered. I have multiple block dragons. I have multiple of this. I have multiple of that. What do you got? You got a dead guy. Yeah. The the Eldritch deck was the other best deck at this time. So think about this. You had a format of basically around six months Where that was, was completely dominated by Secret Synchro- Slayers. Yeah, by Secret Slayers. Exactly. Yeah. And Rika had people on its side for a while yeah they, they saw the potential but, but it wasn't until this past summer yeah of with, 2022 where there where there was enough support that finally came out to where the deck could have its time in the sunlight right and rivalry of warlords was strong enough yeah so. yeah it was a combination of rivalry being strong enough and they also got some new support on top yes of that. and right person at the right place saw the right line marcus patel at european national or euros yep so, next is... Genesis Impact. Uh, well, right, yeah. So, Genesis Impact is next. So, Drytron was extremely good. Drytron was the most high-ceiling combo deck for... On release, it didn't actually do that much. Yeah, it, it took a while for people to kind of figure out the lines. Well, what it really needed was Drytron, Mubei to Fafnir, which Fair. didn't come out for another three or four months. Fair enough. But um, once Mubeta Fafnir came out, that deck was, it was up there with Tri-Brigade. I'm not going to say it was the best deck, but it was one of the two best decks yes, for I, a while. I distinctly remember this deck. I, I, I distinctly remember watching it work and just going, that's really cool. And now I'm dead. Thanks. Because <laughs> like, it's this weird mixture of just these. Oh, hard... wait, we didn't rank Secret Slayers. We did. We gave it like, we gave it, we gave it an A. I remember it's given it an A. Can we give it an... Yeah, we'll give it an A. Okay. Yeah, give it an A+. Plus. Yeah. Anyway, so Drytron, it was very good. Yeah, it's, it's definitely... It, what I really liked about it was all these cards that had nothing to really... It was just kind of a weird pile of cards that had nothing to do with each other that just barely held on together with glue, bubblegum, duct tape. duct tape, and a prayer. And one pipe cleaner. And it worked. <laughs> it just worked. It put in work. Because it was generic ritual support that just kind and like, it worked. Yeah, because it's generic ritual support that will let you get into specific ritual monsters that also accidentally happened to be generic support for fairies. Right. Which kind of accidentally supported it. It was 
a bunch of just so happened accidentallys right. for that deck to function the way it did, and it was amazingly hilarious. Magistus was really bad though. Very bad. It cool still looking. Is. Very cool looking. Um, but to, what I really liked about Magistus though is that it 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 put together all these spellcaster archetypes that had nothing to do with each other, and then all of a sudden now they are part of something. But they're bad. They are awful. An evil twin is interesting. It has this weird moments of coming in and out of relevance. Yeah, so it was best, I think, ever right when... Be right before... It, okay, so before Darkwing Blast released mm -hmm. and before Magnificent Mavens, when the format was kind of dominated by Power of the Elements, but you didn't have everything getting too broken, and so you had the live twin sprite deck that deck was cool that deck was really cool because so. all the live twins just so happen to be level and link too except trouble yes Sunny. exactly so uh, overall i give this one a b yeah solid b uh i'll give it one a b. great deck one pretty good deck and one terrible deck yeah i give it a b plus for design again because the majestuses but i also want to just say no you get an f minus because majestus also kind of gave more attention to a deck that to a deck that did not need more attention yeah 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 in invoke magist oh well yeah because Ma invoked is technically part of magistus oh is it part of the same lore yeah uh crowley the invoker is alistair yeah alistair thank you is is also is one of the magistuses oh before okay before he becomes alistair the invoker oh okay he's okay. a magistus so is i think one of the witchcrafters and the spell books are part of that too gotcha because one of the Magistuses is an old man is in the middle of the Spellbooks library. Yeah. Next, we have Ancient Guardians. Hey, this is where we started. Yeah. This is where we joined the content creation community, our yeah. first episode uh, about us and Ancient Guardians. Don't go listen to it. It's bad. <laughs> so, of course, we want to talk about Sulfacord, Ogdoatic, and Ursarctic. All of them are bad. But Ogdoatic, I think, has the most potential just because it's generic reptile stuff. Yes. Uh, Snake Rain is a blowout in that deck. Yeah. Overall, I give this set an F-. I give it a I give it an, uh, an F, but with an asterisk because of the potential of Ogdoatic. Of, of Ogdoatic. Only because of the potential of Ogdoatic. So F with a asterisk. Yeah. Next, we have Grand Creators. <laughs> Punk Adventure and Exosister, I'm giving this one an S tier. Oh, easily. Oh, my God. Yeah. Punk Adventure and Exosister is so, crazy. Punk and Adventure, I don't think we have to explain. I will shortcut it and say saying that Adventure is is one of the most splashed engines I probably in the game's history. Probably, yeah. Um, Arguably. It's arguably. Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, Punk created an entire synchro pile that yes. just kind of works to put out... Um, Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Bane. Also, the Punk Tier Limit Sprite deck. Also super cool. PTSD. Yep. That deck was sick. It, it gave me PTSD. Punk Tier Limit Synchro, or Punk Tier Limit Sprite, what was the D? I don't dragons? Remember. I think it was Dragons, because they also had like some just random level two dragons in there or something. I don't remember. Uh, oh, yes, yes. R Rose Dragons. Oh, that's the right. Rose that's Dragons, right. That's which right. Which are generic synchro stuff. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that, it was. Oh, my goodness. I almost tipped my entire little Ooh. thing over here over because I'm trying to get a little <laughs> bit more. Sorry, my life. I'm trying to get a little bit more length out of this thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have Tactical Masters. Oh, well, real quick. There were also Exorcisters at launch. People are like, this is awful. And then they released information about the next, and then like people looked ahead and went, "This is playable." And yes. then it was really good. Good enough to win YCS Niagara. Yep, because I was it, there. Everybody was freaking out because it exactly countered the two best decks in the room. Yes, it just happened to exactly counter what they were trying to do. Hilariously. Yes. Next we have Tactical Masters with Runic Valence and Labyrinth. Uh, I'll put this one in <laughs> B for now. <clears throat> B, I'd, I'd say B minus, A plus for design though. I'd almost say S tier for design. As far as design goes, it might be S tier, honestly. Because the entire because the entire set was tailor designed to be based around just 
video games, with each of those three archetypes being a different type of video game. Right. It was super cool. I love it. I also really enjoy Very the innovative design. I also really enjoy the Labyrinth as an archetype, personally as well. Um, not a big fan of Runic. I don't like what Runic does, but I respect it for what it is. That, that's a good way of putting it. Um, so, S tier design, but like B minus for actual, how it actually functions. Yes. And the last one that's worth discussing is, unfortunately, Amazing Defenders. F minus. Yeah, Amazing Defenders is really bad. You can't even look you can't even look at the reprints for Amazing Defenders and find something worth talking about. Like the only thing worth buying the set is the collector rare one for one and uh uh card trooper. Yeah. And if you want Infernobles. Yeah, and if you want Infernobles for some reason. Because the archetypes themselves are bad. Yeah. Like the Adorable, but bad. Yeah. So, unfortunately, overall, though, it's obviously Grand Creators and Secret Slayers are the best. Yeah, the cream two best, of the crop. Yeah, that have ever been printed. Yes. Um, and it's not it's not close. No, no. Because like then like all the rest underneath them are underneath them by a mile. It's right. Kind of ridiculous. OK, well, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. Mm -hmm. Thank you all so much for listening. We hope you've had a wonderful weekend and we hope you have a wonderful week going forward. Until next time. Thank you and have a good one. Take care, everybody.